We all know guitar amplifiers are loud, so if you want to own a guitar amplifier that is loud and still be able to play it in your apartment, you need something to make it more quiet or even completely silent. In the great year of 2015, the most popular solution found on YouTube and the internet in general was this, the Two Notes Torpedo Live. I'm going to start off this by saying this is not the solution you're looking for if you want to replace your guitar cabinet in a studio situation. Since the release and success of the Two Notes Torpedo Live, a lot of other companies have entered the market. And there is a lot of cheaper options available, and even from Two Notes themselves, the Two Notes Torpedo Captor. I would recommend you to buy the Captor and use the Wall of Sound software instead of buying the unit if you're only going to use it in the studio or in your home. I'm going to show you now a playthrough of different sounds and different cabinets and I'm going to use my Marshall Audio 50 head with my Cla Squire Classic Vibe Telecaster. Right now the preset I'm ha having here is the one I use with my old Mesa Boogie. It sounds like this. <laughs> So let's try and make a preset that is uh, Marshall. So first of all, let's take guitar cabinet, 4x12, and that should be British Vintage, Brits Vinci. <laughs> simulation and uh, right now it's an SM57. Let's put them in the middle. So but my biggest pet peeve with this, like for the, the software and everything like that, is that you only have one microphone. I would like to combine two microphones, maybe a condenser and a dynamic. So yeah, that's a big con, but if you create your own IR, you don't have to deal with that, but... This, this is now with British Vintage. Uh, with SMV. Let's try and switch out the microphone to something. Maybe an U87. couple of different microphones. You also have like uh, dynamic microphones for bass, if you're using this with a bass amp. So let's try, a, I think this is a Beta 52. Yeah, and it sounds just as bad as a real sure Beta 52. So I don't like this cabinet, so let's try another cabinet. Let's see if we go to Let's see uh, if we have one that I bought from the store. Let's see. Uh, uh, Uber 30. That should be Uber Shawl, I think, with the Windows 30. And this microphone is a Sennheiser 906. Or I have, here we have a, a SM7B. That might be great. I like the microphone guitar. I even have one here. With a little bit of. <laughs> but I'm not trying pro mode on it. So let's see how this sounds. This sounds great. I actually like this one, so I might be using this a bit more. This should be a diesel with Windows 30. And not use a base 20, we will use a Dynamic 57. This cabinet is the most, the cabinet I use the most. Uh, 
before on my older videos uh, in Australia because I think it sounds one of the best, or it's, it's one of the best sounds. This cabinet, if you buy uh, the or if you own the torpedo and you use Wall of Sound, I would recommend the Nose 30 because it's my favorite cabinet. Now we're going to create a new preset. So let's open the ne next user bank here. And uh, right now it starts out with the Marshall Vintage or British Vintage. I'm not a fan of this cabinet, so let's switch it out to a cabinet I like. And um, let's go with the uh, uh, Bogner Ubershaw 30 and select the SM7B that I tried earlier. So I'm not as happy with it as I was last time. So let's see if we. Turn up the volume on my speakers. How I normally would mic up cabinet is that I would put the mic pretty close, so maybe like three, two percent off, and then put it the same uh, off center. So let's try and go back to that one. So about the same. this one. This is something I can work with. Let's try and add more gain to the amp by pulling the boost. So yeah, I really like this preset, so let's go with this one for the sound demo I'm going to show you right now. I haven't used the Tuna Torpedo Live for live use yet, I'm going to do it in a couple of weeks, but I can imagine it being great because then you can have it completely silent on the stage from the guitar amp and just have it in your in-ears or in your monitors, all the guitars. 
if you want to. Uh, you could also use like a real cabinet, but don't have to mic it up. So that would be a pro, I guess, if you're playing in a in a bigger venue. I would say the big feature to use this live uh, is the IR loader. You can create your own custom impulse response uh, of your own guitar cabinet in the studio and bring it on the road. And that basically you create it with a so tune-on software and you can also use other softwares to create an IR. But you, you create an IR and then load it into the unit and then you can have it your like studio's mic'd up cabinet on the road and have a great set combined with different microphones that you don't need to use. And you ha will also have the same sound every time. Let's go through the pros and cons of this unit. The pro is you can use custom impulse responses live. And I explained that earlier that it's really a good feature. And um, uh, the unit is built like a tank. It's really solid, so that's a pro. If you want, you can crank your amp's power amp live. So if you're using a JMP, you can have the amp be completely silent, but you can still crank the amp to shit. So just you can just crank it and still be completely silent, like a library. The first con is that the built-in presets are pretty bad or average at best. Everyone I've seen have only made uh, their own preset. So the, all the regular presets aren't that fantastic, um, that's a con. The con, I, the biggest con for me with this unit and simulation of this kind in general is that there's something missing. And uh, it's kind of a, both a low end thing missing, like the sort of attack is different when I use my Marshall and even with my Mesa, it's, it's a sort of different attack. And then when you go into higher gain settings, there's feel it feels like there's something missing in the in the sort of high end, like there's something wrong. Um, I don't know how really to explain it, but it just feels like something is wrong. That's why I wouldn't like use this as a mainstay in the studio or impulse response at all. It just feels like something is wrong when you compare uh, the signal I recorded from my Marshall with my uh, regular cabinet and with my impulse response. It's just like trying to get them as close as possible and the, the sound from the torpedo is okay and I find you use it but is there something like something's missing it's like it's more closed uh, in the torpedo like the sound and more open with a real microphone I would also like them to be able to use two microphones in the unit uh, because this is a kind of expensive unit and you think that you should be able to use two microphones in one simulation I don't know if that's uh, like possible to add in a patch maybe but that's something I would like to use. Maybe use a cond condenser and a dynamic microphone. The price tag is another issue. I think this unit is a bit too expensive considering what it is. And considering the price of the captor, I think this is uh, too expensive. I think this could maybe be priced at 650 euros instead of 800 something. I think it's 800 for nine now. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, it's uh, definitely deserves a little bit lower price tag. Uh, my biggest pet peeve with a unit, and the last con, is there is no power soak. I would like a power soak feature so that I could like play with my amp and crank the amp and still being able to have the monitor function from the real cabinet and s be able to send the cranked like simulated signal directly to the front of house or to monitors but to have, to have on stage so that there's some volume coming out of the speaker cabinet Right now, you, you just have like a through output, so if you crank your Marshall, it will be loud as shit on stage. Um, I haven't seen a function like that in the unit, and I would like a function like that in the unit. So yeah, thank you for watching, and please come again.